sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. Welcome back. In the last video we talked about some of the trends in, in population estimates across some of the different species found in Australia. What we're going to do in this video, come next stop on, which says outline factors that affect numbers in predator and prey populations in the area studied. So we've gone to go over the word predator and prey, what well, exactly that means as well. But outline just means we have to give the basic features or basic facts. So basic facts of those factors that affect both predator and prey in any given area. So the area that you study. So we've had some area that you studied, maybe specific interactions in that area itself. So for example, these are a couple of examples of predator and prey because I want to go over that word first to make sure we all know what that predator and prey is. So for example, here we've got a fox which is hunting some kind of rabbit. In this example, the fox is the predator and the prey is the actual rabbit which is being eaten. That's the predator and prey relationship. We've got one animal which is feeding off by killing the other animal, feeding off the other animal. So the prey is the rabbit and the predator is the actual fox. In this case, we've got a lioness and we have a zebra. The lion is the predator and the zebra is the prey because the prey has been killed and eaten by the lion. So basically the food for the lion is a zebra. And in this case we've got a cheetah, cheetah and an antelope. And I'm sure you can guess which one of the predator and prey. Our cheetah is the predator and our antelope is the prey. Now this example is actually the next one is just a bit of a random one and there's no actual predator prey for this relationship but we've got a cat here and we have a cat here and I just chose that picture because it's pretty cool but they're actually I mean this is nothing to do with actual predator prey relationships they're just having a fight so none of these these are not either predators or prey that's not a predator prey relationship because this cat won't eat this cat, they won't be eating each other, they're just having a fight. But overall, the idea between predators and prey is that one is eating the other for its food. Not just killing it, but killing it for its food. So the actual point says outline factors that, that affect the numbers in predator and prey populations in the area studied. So what kind of factors would affect the prey? So the thing that's being eaten. Well, everything, every organism needs to have food and space. So it itself needs to be have enough food, enough space. So for example, if we're talking about, we talked about the rabbit in the last example, if there isn't enough grass, then the prey will, will also go down. So the actual prey needs to have enough space and food to thrive. It also needs to be having, ideally it should be disease free, so no disease. Because disease itself will obviously kill the prey and it will bring down its numbers. So disease will bring down its numbers. Again, this is also important. The more predators, the lower the numbers. So predators also brings down the numbers because predators would eat the actual prey. And time of the year, again, sometimes you would have seasons where they might breed. So there would be the, the breeding seasons, which means the numbers would go up really high. Whereas other times it would be, you know, during the winter they might some of them might die to starvation and the numbers will be going down. So the time of the year is also important. Sometimes for some animals, the time of the year during the breeding season they would be going up numbers. And then during the actual, you know, the hard years or not years but months, you know, the winter months, they might be decreasing numbers. The time of year depends. These are some of the factors that affect the prey. Now the factors that affect the predator, the food availability, because every living thing needs food. But the thing is with, the, with predators, their food is actually the prey. So the number of prey is important. The more prey there is, the more food to have. And also competition is also important. So for example, we had the example of lion and the cheetah that I just mentioned earlier. And they both live in the same ecosystem sometimes. So what that means is you might have, you know, lions and cheetah both, they're not trying to eat each other. They're not predator and prey relationship with each other. They're in competition with each other. So they might be going for the same food. So if there's lots of prey available, that's good for lions and cheetahs. But the problem is if there are lots of lions and cheetahs around, then there's too much competition and the prey will be spread over too many animals. So competition is generally a bad thing as well. It will affect the predator numbers. So the more competition, the smaller numbers. And the more food available, the higher the numbers for predators. And also I just wrote the other factors mentioned. 
occurs in our stuff like disease and time of the year. That's also important for predators. And even the number of predators might be. So, for example, even though a, let's say, a rabbit eats a grasshopper, so the rabbit is a predator and the grasshopper is a prey, but even the rabbit would have a predator. So, for example, a hawk might eat the rabbit. So, you know, the actual predators also need to care about different types of predators they might have. The more predators that they have, the lower the numbers. But the actual, so this, these were some of the factors that affected. And what you also need to know is you need to be able to kind of draw or be able to interpret a graph, which I'm going to draw in a second. Because what you can imagine here, what I've drawn here is we've got the green ones are meant to be your prey, so, and then your red dots are your predators. So what happens if, for example, initially we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine prey, and we have one and two, two predators. So at the moment, everything's looking good for the predators. They'll have plenty of food, right? So what they'll do is they'll just start eating a couple of them. So this one might, you know, go here and and grab this one and eat it, and then this predator's gone, and eventually this one might eat this one, and this one's gone. But now they have lots of food. So what they'll do when they have lots of food is they'll start reproducing. So you know you have new predators being born because of that food, and maybe another one. And eventually, what will happen is there's going to be more and more predators, and they're going to feed off the prey. So they're going to eat more and more of them. So again, we might say, okay, a couple of days later, another, a couple of months later, another couple of been eaten, and then the predator numbers have increased more because they've got so much food. But all of a sudden, you'd see that ratio being different. Now we've got much more predators than prey. And remember, predators want to have food. They want, their food is their prey. So now, some of them will starve. So some of them will starve. And they'll starve because there isn't enough prey around. And they'll be going down because they're starving. And because there's less predators around, the prey numbers will increase again because they have less predators chasing them. So then they'll increase again. And the whole cycle starts. So when it comes to the relationship between predators and prey, it's actually fluctuations. It goes up and down. And it's usually a pattern. So I'll draw the actual graph. So set with graphs, we should have the stuff that we're measuring goes on the actual vertical axis. So here we're measuring the number of predator, predators, sorry if I spelled that wrong, and prey. And on the actual vertical, horizontal axis, we would have time Maybe set, say time in months. And then you should also have an actual legend because we're, what we're doing now is we're saying, okay, the red line will represent the number of predators and predators. And the green line will represent the number of prey. So what happens initially, as I mentioned earlier, initially the numbers of prey might be really low. Uh, sorry, really high, so this is a high number of prey, and the number of predators might be really low. Then what happens, the predators start eating the prey, and they'll be increasing numbers because they're eating the prey. But as soon as this happens, because the prey are being eaten, the prey numbers are going down. And then, for a while, the predator numbers will continue to rise because they're eating enough food. But all of a sudden, you've gotten to a point where the numbers of the prey have actually, because the numbers of predators have gone so high, Numbers of prey have gone so low. That what happens now is the actual prey, uh, sorry, the predators will start to die off. They'll die of starvation. They don't have enough food. They'll be going down again. And as, as soon as they're going down, you're going to have the prey going back up again because there's less predators to chase them and then to hunt them, to kill them. And then the whole thing starts again. So you can see the cycle of fluctuations is quite common. And then it would repeat again. This would go up. And as soon as this goes up, the predator numbers go down because they're being chased. But as soon as, again, we've got too many predators, they'll die of starvation, they'll go down. And because they're going down, numbers of predators will increase. So if you were to say, you know, I mean, this would be this line here, what I'm going to draw now, this would be the constant, everything's constant, right in the middle. But that rarely happens when it comes to predators and prey. There's usually this kind of relationship, where the numbers of prey might be really high, and then predators might be low. But then the preys are starting to be eaten by the predators. So preys go down, predators go up, and then this whole cycle starts again. So this is an actual quite common relationship between predators and prey. And these are some of the factors that affect the actual relationships. So for prey, we need they need to have they themselves need to have enough food and enough space to be able to grow and, and reproduce. They should be disease free. If they have too much disease, then their numbers will go down. 
obviously the more pressures, the more the numbers will also go down. And also the time of the year might be important. During breeding seasons, the numbers might be increasing. And during hard months, the numbers might be decreasing. Factors that affect predators. Again, food availability is really important. So the, their food for predators are their prey. So if the prey are down, then their numbers will also go down. Whereas if the prey are going up numbers, then they have more to feed off. So competition. So if, for example, two different... So competition means you have two different species or two different animals that are hunting the same prey. So the more competition, the bad, worse for them. And as I mentioned, yeah, some of the other factors that are relevant for the prey are also relevant for the predators, such as that they have to have, you have disease-free, time of year might affect their numbers as well. But all of, some of these things that I mentioned are all things that affect both predators and prey and their numbers. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.